Hey, welcome to the Bible and Life podcast. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Here on the Bible and Life, we give blue jeans theology to help you know God and walk with Jesus. And so if you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I hope this helps you grow in your faith. And if you're a regular listener of the show, man, thanks for being a part of the Bible and Life family. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you. And the same is true for you. I hope this helps you grow in your faith and grow in your walk with God. On today's show, I, I want us to think about this question. What is keeping you from living the life that you really want to live? What is keeping you from living the life you believe God has called you to live? So often people say, well, I'm too busy, or man, it's my, my past, or my circumstances. or And we, we refer to all these things that we act like are out of our control. And I think there is a better way to live, something else that can actually help us live well, well, and as you listen to the show today, I think you'll get some insight into what that better thing is, and it has a lot to do with the choices we make and how we arrange our life. And so today on the show, we've got a, a special guest. We've got a young man by the name of Brock Johnson who's going to share a little bit of his story and how his faith in Jesus is at the center of that story and how it all comes together to help him live the kind of life that he really wants to live, that he believes God is calling him to live. So check this out. So thanks, Brock, for uh, jumping on the podcast with me and being a part of the Bible and Life podcast. And it's, it's great to have you on here. And uh, I'm guessing a lot of my audience doesn't know who you are. Mm -hmm. So in just a sentence or two, a couple sentences, like, who, who is Brock Johnson? <laughs> well, John, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show today. Who is Brock Johnson? I am someone who's very busy. I am a college student athlete. Uh, so I played Division I football here at UC Davis. And I also run a full-time business uh, on the side. Um, and I do all of this while also balancing having somewhat of a normal college experience and having friends and playing video games. And my faith is very important to me. So going to church a couple times a week and uh, I find some way to balance it all while still uh, managing to not flunk out of school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And which I've always been amazed, particularly at um, college athletes like you who who aren't just, you know, they're primarily just to, you know, blow through school, get a, you know, go for two years and then hope to move to the pros, but who, you know, you got a lot going on in life. And I Absolutely. look at you just watching you on Instagram and some of the things I've seen you, you know, and you've, you've, you've got a lot going on in life, you know? <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned a couple of them, you got, you got obviously football, you got college and studies, you've got your business. And mm -hmm. so uh, tell us a little bit about each of those. Like what, what's your degree program in school? Yeah, so in school, I'm a communication major. Uh, it's very broad, very applicable. A lot of it is about mass communications, advertising, marketing. Uh, so although it's not like necessarily in the business field, I feel that it's actually more uh, important for me to learn those principles as someone who's an entrepreneur uh, than some of the things I learned in business school. Because when I did uh, first start out in college, I wasn't at UC Davis. I actually started out at Georgetown uh, out on the East Coast. and I was in their business school. And I feel I've learned more uh, here at UC Davis as a communication major uh, that helps me out as an entrepreneur. So that's kind of what I'm doing in school and football. I'm a quarterback. I had a kid ask me the other day, uh, we we're helping out at this uh, foreign exchange event, teaching them about football. And a kid asked me, how long have you been playing football? How old were you when you started? And I started when I was like five years old. I think I started playing tackle when I was six or seven years old. And he said, no way, you're, you're lying. There's no, no, no chance. I was like, yep, pretty much since first grade. This is like my 18th season of football, something like that. Uh, so I've been playing my whole entire life. Uh, and then my business is something that I kind of got to start in from my parents. They are both entrepreneurs. I was raised in a household that uh, was really entrepreneurial focused. They both own their own businesses together uh, my entire life. Uh, so when I first got to college, I started my first business, which has now uh, grown into multiple online courses, which basically are a way for me to take what I've learned and help other small business owners market using social media. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And how many courses do you have? I think I have four right now, four, four that are open currently. And uh, overall, I think I've had six or seven throughout okay. the years. So uh, what, are the, what, are, what, are, like, what are those courses or what are the top two out of those four courses? Like Probably the top two right now uh, is first of all, the Focus Formula. That was my most recent course. And that one was kind of developed in talking about exactly what we've been talking about so far, which is like, we all are very busy. We all have not enough hours in our day. Um, and although I may not have 
uh, a wife and children yet. I do have a very busy schedule. I have a full-time yeah. job being that I'm a college football player. I am still having to be a college student and I have to get passing grades in, in order to stay eligible. Um, I do have an uh, important role in the church. I volunteer a lot. I have friends and I do all of this while running a business full-time, uh, which I'm able to make a living off of and uh, be completely financially independent from my parents. Uh, so people are always like, how are you able to balance all of that? Um, and so that is really my, my process, uh, my formula for balancing it all and figuring out how to still achieve my goals and make progress and still have time for freedom and enjoying life. That's the focus formula. And then my most popular course is called Help With Hashtags. And that's an Instagram strategy course teaching you uh, how to grow your Instagram account using my unique hashtag strategy, which is very different uh, than most other hashtag strategies that I've either read about or heard about on podcasts. It's totally unique and I've created it myself. Um, and for that reason, it's pretty popular and it continues to work and deliver results. Uh, and so it's actually the most popular Instagram hashtags training on the market. Really? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very it, fired up about it. What, what's like the, uh, like you say, it's the most unique thing. Like just obviously we don't, we don't want to give it all away. You know, yeah. we want people to sign up for that course, man. You need to make an income, but uh, like just, What's one really unique thing about your approach to hashtags? Yeah, so, and, and I, I, we could be in here for two or three hours just talking about hashtags and still not give it all away. Uh, but basically, uh, I focus more on top posts within hashtags. And if some people are listening right now, they might have no clue what I'm talking about. That's totally fine. Uh, we start whether you're an expert at Instagram and hashtags or whether you have never done a hashtag before in your life. Uh, I start with the very basics and explain it all the way through. But basically, most people are just using popular hashtags and they're only showing up in the recent category. Uh, when I walk you through help with hashtags, I ensure that your posts are showing up in the top posts category. Cool. Mm -hmm. And do most of the people that sign up for that course, are they uh, other people that want to grow their Instagram for business or? Yeah, there, there are some influencers, people who just want to grow their, grow their following in general, but it's mainly small business owners. That's my, my niche, my, my primary market. Uh, I, I know who my ideal customer is, and it's a small business owner, uh, probably someone who is a female, like a mom, who doesn't have a ton of time to figure all this out on their own. Uh, so I'm there to help her out along the way. Cool, cool. And uh, you're hot and heavy in the middle of uh, football season. Yes, sir. And uh, and you're you're playing a big game this weekend against the number one ranked team in the in the nation in FCS. So that's pretty awesome. And so as a college student and a college athlete, as well as a business owner. In a nutshell, what does an average day in the life of Brock Johnson look like? <laughs> the average day starts somewhere around 5 a.m., heading in, watching about an hour or so of film early in the morning, uh, just kind of getting prepared. And then we usually have either an hour to two hours worth of meetings uh, after that in the morning, watching film with our coaches and with each other. Then we have practice, which is, you know, two to three hours sometime in the morning. And this is all done before noon. Of course, there's lots of meals and snacking going on uh, throughout this entire time. After that, usually I have lunch and then I take like a 15 minute nap <laughs> after lunch. And then I usually have a workout after that. That's about an hour, hour and a half workout, have another meal, come back in the afternoon, work on business stuff for a couple hours. Um, and I like to have everything done by about 8 p.m. at night. And that gives me a few hours kind of unwind, hang out with my friends, play some video games, watch some movies, whatever it may be. Um, and I like to try to be in bed and asleep by 10 p.m. because uh, I know how vital my sleep is. And if I don't get at least seven hours, it's a rough day for me. Dude, I'm the same way. So I yeah. get that. We're, what about classes? Don't you have to go to class? Yeah. So right now we actually haven't started school yet. Okay. That's what's really cool about going to UC Davis and being in what we call the quarter system. All the other semester schools started school like a couple of weeks ago. We still don't start for another week and a half. So as of right now, I don't have any classes but they will start next week. Uh, so next week I'll have uh, about one or two classes every single day, uh, sometime in the afternoon. So sometime in that window when right now I'm working on my business or doing a podcast like this, next week that'll be focused a little bit more on school and classes and homework. Okay. Uh, so the, the crazy schedule that I live in right now will become even, even crazier about a week from now. And it's going to get ramped up pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the colleges here in our area, they, they're all in semester. So they they started the last week of August. So they've been yeah. going for like three weeks already yep. or whatever. So yep. 
Yeah, so that's nice. That's nice you've had at least a few weeks to get the football season going before things get too crazy. Absolutely. We call ourselves, we always say, like, we get to be a pro football team for the first four weeks of the season. And honestly, it's a huge advantage and uh, something that I really appreciate about going to a UC school. Yeah, that's cool. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show is, you know, my show is Bible and Life, and I do a lot with Bible teaching and people related to, the, you know, faith stuff like that. And just following you on Instagram and watching you, particularly over, it seems like the last handful of months, you've been more and more explicit about your, your faith mm -hmm. on Instagram. And maybe it's just because I've just been noticing more, don't really know. But it just really struck me, you know, as a young man who's got a crazy life, got a lot going on, and yet you're also trying to actively follow Jesus and walk with Jesus. I just think that's mm -hmm. really awesome. And so I wanted to have you on and have you share a little bit about that, you know, like, it, you know, a little bit of your story. How did you meet Jesus and how does that affect everything you're doing and some of that? So yeah. why don't you give us a little background to your faith? Did you grow up going to church and following Jesus? Is it more of a recent development? Just kind of what's, what's your background with that? Yeah, well, thank you very much. I, I do appreciate that. Uh, it means a lot to me that people are taking note. Um, I actually didn't really grow up in the church. My parents went to church a little bit when they were real young. And then for most of their life, they didn't uh, really go to church that much. And when we started out growing up, we went to church maybe, you know, at weddings or, or Christmas time, but we didn't really go to church that often until yeah. I got into high school. My freshman year of high school, uh, we were invited to church by some of our family friends. And God bless, we lived very close to uh, the mega church that is Saddleback Church. If anyone knows Saddleback with Pastor Rick Warren, that's 15 minutes from where we grew up. Uh, so we started going to Saddleback. Uh, and very quickly, uh, I fell very hard into the church life. Uh, I started leaning very deeply into my relationship with Jesus, started to grow in my faith. Um, also at that time, uh, there were a lot of guest speakers coming into Saddleback Church. So I think that that was uh, another blessing of God, just being able to show me uh, all of these different unique preachers from around the world, uh, from the Philippines, from Las Vegas, from New York, people from all over the United States and the world coming to speak. So I got to see uh, a lot of different, really, really powerful, great pastors uh, yeah. talking about a lot of different subjects. And that, so that's kind of how my faith got started. Um, and then I, I really just dove in deep and really deeper than anyone else in my family to the point where by my sophomore year, uh, my nickname in the family was Pastor Brock. Uh, <laughs> started to get really into it. Um, started to go to church every week religiously, uh, pun intended. And then eventually um, I discovered Saddle, or not Saddleback Church, that was where we started. I discovered Church Home, uh, which at the time was called City Church, and that was based out of Seattle with Pastor Judah Smith. But every single Wednesday night, he does a service in LA. Uh, so for my entire junior and senior year of high school, every Wednesday night, I'd leave the house at like 5, 5 p.m., drive two hours, get up there to church, go to church from 8 to 9 on a Wednesday night, uh, and then drive back home and get home around 10 or 11 that night. Um, but I really enjoyed uh, Pastor Judah's uh, zest and his energy and his, and his comedy and the way he could really relate uh, church to life. So I continued to grow. I got baptized um, with my dad um, the morning of my very first or my last first high school football game. So the first game of my senior football season, my dad and I both got baptized together. And that was a really, really special moment for us yeah. and our family. Um, awesome. And I've just continued to grow. So when I was at Georgetown, I found a, a, a great community that I got plugged into there. And then when I transferred here to Davis, I found another great community here, continued to go to church here. Um, and one of the things that I think has helped me grow in my faith the most is my friend group here at Davis. Uh, I was very intentional when I got here about curating friends uh, who were Jesus driven and Jesus focused uh, and not necessarily people who were uh, hardcore religious, but just people who believed in Jesus, believed in the faith, and or at least wanted to learn more and continue to grow with me. Yeah. Uh, so I, I curated that group of friends, and now some of my friends are, some of my very best friends, some people who I consider brothers for life are the type of guys who text me Bible verses every single day or are just constantly asking how can they pray for each other. And uh, on our football team, we also have a great culture that we've built uh, where we have a Bible study with like 20 guys on the team every single week. There's an athlete-only Bible study that the school hosts. Uh, so there's a lot of really great yeah. faith-based opportunities that relate to school and football here. And uh, I think that's really allowed me to grow in my faith as well. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I, I think one of the things that a lot of young people don't 
uh, always appreciate is how unique of a time in life college can be and this young adulthood can be and how cultivating those relationships and how in some ways it's, it's, it's one of the easiest time in life to make friends is when you're in yeah. college and if you're intentional, like it sounds like you've been cultivating good friendships, how, man, that can just be such a rich, rich time in life that Lord willing can go beyond college. You know, my son is yeah. 23 and most of his closest friends are spiritual friends from his teenage years, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, uh, and so that's just awesome, you know, that you, you were that intentional about it. And, and in a lot of ways, one of the things I always tell people is discipleship always, always happens through a life on life transfer. It always, it never happens, you know, on, on your own. There's always some sort of life on life transfer. So, so to have that group of friends around you where you're pouring into each other and you can share with each other and build each other up, man, what a, what a blessing and a unique opportunity that is, you know? Absolutely. I agree. I could not be more thankful uh, for the group of guys I'm around here at Davis. Yeah, that's wonderful. And how does that, uh, well, let me ask you this, some of maybe your spiritual practices, I mean, be, besides going to church and obviously you got your friends and those are two spiritual practices. Do you have any like personal spiritual practices that kind of you, you try to incorporate into your routine, your day that help you walk with Jesus? Mm -hmm. I recently started doing with actually one of my roommates, we do a daily devotional uh, together. So we'll read a couple of verses and kind of talk about it and uh, I have a journal that I write in every single day where I kind of write my thoughts and kind of just express my questions and whatever I'm going through. Uh, and that, that's one thing that I like to do. And then also uh, what's nice about playing a sport is that every single day before I take the field, it's a very easy cue and reminder for myself uh, to just kind of spend a moment in, in prayer. Yeah. Uh, and our coach, our coach likes to stress before taking the field that we find calmness and stillness. Um, and so for me, finding calmness and stillness is dropping to a knee and bowing my head and spending a few minutes with God and uh, just talking and, and spending some time in prayer before and after practice. That's good. Good. Yeah. I mean, bringing God into all parts of your life, man, that's, yeah, that's good. And so, so you look at your whole life, you look at everything you got going on right now and you look at your business and, and uh, I guess, how does your how does your relationship with Jesus and your faith kind of shape, affect, govern, guide everything that you're trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, my relationship with Jesus is 100% uh, what I'm focused on, or at least I hope that it's 100% of what I focus on. Um, and it's what guides me in everything I do and every decision I make. It's, it's preyed on. Um, and I also think that it's very important to keep me humble. Uh, because every time I read the Bible, every time I spend time in prayer, I'm reminded of my need for a savior. Um, and I think that with everything I have juggling and everything I have going on, uh, people might look, especially if they're just looking at social media, uh, they might look at me and think that I got it all going on or I got it all figured out. Um, and I know that I don't. I know that I'm far, far, the farthest thing from perfect. Um, and I know that I'm broken and another member of this broken world that we live in. And so, uh, I appreciate uh, the Savior that I have, and I thank God for my weaknesses too, because they remind me of my need for Him uh, and my need for a Savior. And so, I don't think a day goes by where I'm not reminded of that. Yeah. So, if you if you could give advice to fellow college students, fellow young adults who are getting started in life and who've got you know dreams, ambitions, plans, or, or maybe who are even just struggling with life, what what would be like one little bit of advice you would want to say to your fellow? young adult it's like dude this is this is what i would want to at least encourage you with yeah the, i think the first step i'd want to encourage someone with is just community uh i wouldn't say like force yourself to start going to church or force yourself to start doing this i don't want to force anyone to do anything just think about the people you surround yourself with and i would even go a step further as someone who is big on social media think about the people you're following think about the uh, the YouTube videos you're watching and the podcasts you're listening to, like what ideas or what influencers are you surrounding yourself with? And then what community are you surrounded with uh, at school? I recently had a friend reach out to me and uh, he came to this conclusion on his own that his life trajectory wasn't where he wanted it to be. And he luckily, fortunately for himself, figured out that it was because of the people he was around. So like he said, there's going to be some tough conversations he's going to have to have. Uh, there's going to be some friendships he's going to have to break off, but he wants to start getting plugged into the right community and start finding those friendships and start finding people who are going to push him and who are or are headed towards where he wants to be in five years. 
uh, not people who are just staying in the same place or, or moving backwards. Yeah, that's good. I had a college professor when I was, when I was young, <laughs> I had a college professor who said, you are what you are because of the choices you've made. Mm. You know, and then we, we have the freedom to choose who we hang out with, who we yeah. listen to, you know, what podcasts, YouTube, what, you know, what voices that we let speak into our life. We have the, the freedom to make those choices and those choices yeah. will put us in a positive life trajectory or take us somewhere we don't want to go. So oh, yeah. that's good. That's good. So you're, you're, uh, because of everything you're going on, you know, you're, you're, um, what's it called? Focus factor or focus? Focus formula. Focus formula. That's it. Your focus formula course. Man, I think that's, that could be a useful course for a lot of people, particularly people who've just got a lot on their plate. So where can, where can people find the focus formula? That's on the focus formula course.com. The full focus formula course.com. Okay. And I, I'll put a link in, in the notes down below so people can find all that. Where else can people find you if they want, if they're interested in just getting to know you a little bit more and follow you on social media, where can they find you? Yeah. The best place to find me is probably Instagram. Uh, but across all social medias, I am Brock 11 Johnson. The 11 is my football number. Apparently it's also my middle name. Uh, it's right there sandwiched between Brock and Johnson. So Brock okay. 11. Brock 11 Johnson. Find you on social media. Yes, cool. Sir. That's awesome. Well, I, uh, man, it's just good to get to know you a little bit. I am super impressed by you and uh, by, you know, your, your effort to live intentionally. And, and that affects obviously everything you're doing, business, That's football, cool. school, fo you know, faith, everything that, you know, mm -hmm. friends, social life and, and uh, live intentionally. And that commends you for that. It takes a uh, that, that, that takes a lot of guts and a lot of courage to live intentionally in a world that wants to force you a certain direction. So, so appreciate it. Appreciate you jumping on the podcast and just sharing a little bit of your life, a little bit of story with my listeners and uh, may God bless you. And everything you're doing this year may be, a, may be a great year for you. And how many years left in college do you have? Two more years. So I have this season and then next season will be my last season. Okay. All right. So a couple more years. So may God bless you and all of that, all that you're doing with all of that. So. Thank, thank you so much, John. I really, really appreciate it. Really, it does, from the bottom of my heart, mean so much to me and uh, your words. And thank you so much for having me on the show today. So it really, I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Man, that is great. I'm so grateful to Brock for taking his time to share with me out of the midst of his busy schedule. One of the things I, I say over and over again is you don't drift into discipleship. It doesn't happen on accident. You got to be intentional. And I hope you heard that in this show today is that discipleship happens on purpose. It doesn't happen on accident. You are what you are because of the choices you've made. How do you need to rearrange your life to walk with God and to follow Jesus? Hey, once again, just remember this is a listener supported show. And so if you're part of this show and you've been thinking about it for a while, you can always jump in and support the Bible online so I can continue to make these resources by swinging over to my Patreon page and be uh, become a patron of The Bible and Life, get an extra podcast every month and uh, some extra resources as well. In fact, I'm currently uh, going to be releasing kind of like beta test versions of the listener's commentary. And if you want to jump in and be a beta listener for the the commentary, you can become a patron on my Patreon page and you'll get some samples of that, the listener's commentary on Philippians and Galatians, and you can help make that co commentary a whole lot better. So you can always support the show over there on Patreon. Thanks again for joining me on this uh, episode of The Bible in Life. May God lead you as you walk with him. May you seek his face daily. May you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in all you do. God bless. We'll talk again soon.